Lady Gaga has apologized for working with R. Kelly and said she plans to remove their 2013 single from streaming services in the wake of a recent Lifetime documentary that chronicles allegations of predatory behavior and pedophilia against Kelly. According to CNN, Gaga's single, Do What You Want With My Body, featured vocals by Kelly, which was considered controversial at the time. In a statement, Gaga said, As a victim of sexual assault myself, I made both the song and the video at a dark time in my life. My intention was to create something extremely defiant and provocative because I was angry and still hadn't processed the trauma that had occurred in my own life. Well, it is a sad, sad day in the um, in the in the in the in the world. I guess you know. I guess in the music industry and in entertainment, you really can't trust none of those people. They're all pretty shady. They're all pretty, you know, messed up. You saw you saw the clip at the beginning, right? Let's roll some footage. Take a look at this. Now to some new fallout for R. Kelly from those sexual misconduct allegations. Uh, there you see him overnight at a club in Chicago. Uh, and now Lady Gaga is taking a stand, pulling the song they sang together from streaming platforms. ABC's Lindsay Davis here with the story. Good morning, Lindsay. Good morning, George. Lady Gaga says while she can't take back the decision to work with Kelly, she can go forward and continue to support victims of sexual assault. She says she's now vowing to never work with him again and describes her own sexual assault unrelated to Kelly, twisting her thinking. Overnight, Lady Gaga, the latest star to speak out against R&B star R. Kelly, saying in a statement posted on her Twitter account, I stand behind these women 1,000%, believe them, know they are suffering and in pain, and feel strongly that their voices should be heard and taken seriously. Adding an apology for working with Kelly on their hit collaboration, Do What You Want With My Body. Gaga also announcing she intends to remove the 2013 song from iTunes and other streaming sites. Adding an apology saying, I'm sorry, both for my poor judgment when I was young and for not speaking out sooner. All sparked by the explosive Lifetime documentary series, Surviving R. Kelly, which showcases several women claiming sexual assault by the singer, allegations he has consistently denied. New calls pouring into law enforcement after an Illinois prosecutor asked for alleged victims of the singer to come forward. What I'm trying to do with my office in this time is say, our doors are open to hear you. I can't guarantee outcomes, but I also can't guarantee that we can do an investigation without that participation. According to the Chicago Sun-Times, just in the last 24 hours, at least two women have brought new allegations of inappropriate conduct to Illinois authorities and more potential legal woes as the management team for R. Kelly's ex-wife tells us Kelly failed to show up in child support court yesterday and now owes more than 120 thousand dollars claiming that he has not paid child support since June when Andrea Kelly started speaking out All about right. his alleged abuse. So, Lady Gaga has gone and stated that after watching the surviving R. Kelly series, she is pulling the do what you want song that she and R. Kelly have together off of all music streaming platforms. This is what she is doing because she saw a Lifetime documentary about a person who she worked on a song with. If you guys don't know the background of the song, the background is that Lady Gaga was in Chicago, visiting Chicago, her and her crew, the House of Gaga. Yeah, her, her team, they were sitting around listening to, um, you know, R. Kelly. They decided to hit him up, see if they could do a song with him. Did she, did she not know in 2012 or 2013 when she recorded this song that he had this, this, this supposed child allegations? Did she, did she not know anything about him liking all these women? I mean, you can look at the video footage and see that this is a very sexual performance. Did she not know that he was into sex? Oh, oh, oh. You know what? It became apparently and abundantly clear in 2019 after watching the damn surviving R. Kelly. Now she remembers. Oh, yeah. She was in a bad place at that time. That's what, that's what she says. She was in a bad place. She wasn't herself. She was someone else. 
she she was she was still still getting over her traumatic sexual assault experience oh oh okay was she also suffering from a traumatic experience when she made cheek to cheek with tony bennett that that was that was made within the same year as she made art pop which is the album that do what you want is on which came out in 2013 then she also had an album with tony bennett called cheek to cheek which is also done in the same period same time that she was doing one album she was doing the other album was she also suffering from from the sexual assault then cheek to cheek came out in 2014 it features her and tony bennett the first one came art pop came out in 2013 they were recorded there was an overlap was she still getting over her sexual assault then Either way, who, will, 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 will she, will Rick Ross and Christina Aguilera be next? As seeing as how they're on the remix of Do What You Want, which clearly is a real remix, not a remix that was just made. They all went to the studio and did this. Well, I, I'm, I'm assuming they'll be next. They'll be the next ones to denounce R. Kelly. Who, who else will denounce R. Kelly's music? Will Jay-Z be next? How about Jennifer Lopez? Maybe Nick Cannon will be next for Gigolo. Maybe, you know what, Celine Dion could be next. How about the Michael Jackson family? They'll just say, you know what? We don't, we don't, we denounce R. Kelly for Michael Jackson. Maybe Nas. Who knows? I don't know, but it seems to me that since people saw a documentary where a bunch of women made allegations that really don't all hold together, here we are <laughs> denouncing R. Kelly. I just think it's interesting how we have, we are so much in a rush to judgment on people. We're just in a rush to judge. Look, I, I, I've already said on, on, on the discussion show, if you want to call him a pedophile because of what he did when, with Aaliyah when she was 15, or because of what he did with the 15-year-old girl in the video, I'm with you. I'm with you 100%. But sex cults, sexual assault... Man, that man ain't sexually culting nobody. Ain't nobody no damn sex cult. And the story keeps developing. The three-time Grammy winner has faced mounting legal scrutiny ever since the documentary Surviving R. Kelly aired last week. Well, the family of one of his alleged victims, Joycelyn Savage, believes she's been brainwashed, and they say they desperately want their daughter back. You just make the move to the nearest authority, and we want to see you home and all these girls to come home. Timothy and Jonjolin Savage say they have not seen their 23-year-old daughter, Joycelyn, in person for more than two years. They believe R&B singer R. Kelly is holding her and other women against their will, starving, beating, and sexually abusing them. Are you all confident that R. Kelly will, in fact, see criminal charges pressed against him? I believe his power numbers, and I pray that more young victims come out. Because of their persistent advocacy, Joycelyn's family says they were threatened by Kelly's former manager last May. According to this police report, that manager, James Mason, called Timothy Savage and said, when I see you, I'm going to get you. I'm going to expletive kill you. Joycelyn's family says she was a budding 19-year-old singer when she met Kelly, abruptly left college, and then moved in with him. In a series of videos, she has insisted to her parents she is happy and unharmed. Please stop what you're doing. Please. Her family credits the surviving R. Kelly docuseries with renewing interest in her case, including from law enforcement in Georgia and Illinois. Gerald Griggs, a Savage's attorney, thinks it's only a matter of time before Kelly is charged again. I think it's highly likely that Mr. Kelly will be prosecuted. False imprisonment, kidnapping, domestic abuse, just to name a few. You can't leave a cult. Nexium is a sex cult with white folks in it from Smallwood. See, this is the problem here. People don't know shit about Nexium, so they don't they, they don't really know what a sex cult is. That's a sex cult. People can't leave that sex cult. R. Kelly has a sex cult that you can leave, that the police get to come to the house, do wellness checks, and then they find out that the women are okay because they're answering the door, letting the police come in. This is a strange sex cult. Probably like how you know, Donald Trump is a racist, but he keeps doing good stuff for black people. Such a strange racist. Such strange racism. Dog whistling racism. R. Kelly must be a dog whistling sexual assaulter. Well, whatever. <laughs> whatever. Hey. Guess what? Found some footage from TMZ that shows the supposed women who are 
in the sexual cult of R. Kelly at one of his shows. It's playing right now. I, I don't want to play the audio footage. I'm afraid that the, so we'll get some copyright law. But you see, they, there are the women right there in question who are supposedly being in a sex cult, who are missing. <laughs> they're, they're miserable. Seem to be having a pretty good time to me. I forgot. That's part of the brainwashing, right? The brainwashing mechanism that R. Kelly is using on these women is to make them feel seem like they're having a really good time when they're not. I know. But you can leave. You know, this is like Scientology. You know, in Scientology, they always saying how they can't leave. But when they do leave, it doesn't seem like Scientology is in a rush to hurry up and get your ass back. Or they're not doing anything. They're just like filming you. Or, <laughs> or they're like following you around the neighborhood. Like you get an avocado. They get an avocado. Like it's just doing weird shit. But apparently, apparently in America and in the world, we have cults where you can leave. And then you're, it, that's when the problems really begin, is when you leave. I, I, I'm going to give you a two for one today, guys. A two, two special reports for the Uno. Harvey Weinstein got his case <sighs> that Ashley Judd filed against him for sexual assault. Dismissed. A federal court dismissed actress Ashley Judd's sexual harassment claim against Harvey Weinstein Wednesday. Judd alleges Weinstein blacklisted her from multiple movie roles. Judd says she refused his sexual advances in the mid-1990s and claims that led her to not being cast in the Lord of the Rings trilogy. However, a judge in California ruled their relationship at the time did not fall within the statute judge sued under. She is, however, still allowed to litigate her defamation claim. Judd was one of the first stars to publicly accuse Weinstein of harassment. Now, I don't know when you people are going to realize that these women are making some frivolous charges. The judge found her, 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 her case to not be particularly credible. And they also dismissed Ashley Judd's claim of sexual assault. This is not the first one. I believe this is the second or the third one of these cases, these sexual assault cases or rape cases that's gotten dismissed from Harvey Weinstein. When y'all gonna learn? When y'all gonna learn it can't be sexual assault if you come to my hotel room, I say, would you like to suck a dick? And you say, sure. You cannot come back 10, 12 years later and say, I'm, for, I'm, I'm, I'm hurt because of this. You know, what's interesting is Ashley Judd is going, to, is going to try to go ahead and go on with another case where she's going to try a defamation lawsuit against Harvey Weinstein, which is going to try to prove that he hurt her career. Yeah, he, he hurt her career and she had all of those movies from the 1990s and the, and the, and the 2000s, including, including Frida, which won Golden Globes and was nominated for Oscars. Yeah, yeah he hurt your career. He... He fucked you up. Yeah, I see. When y'all gonna learn? When is it gonna, when are you guys gonna see that the truth? You can go and investigate and find it out for yourself. You don't have to make assumptions. You don't have to do what Lady Gaga did and be a, and be a bitch. I mean, why gotta be, why, why you gotta be such a, a bitch? You don't have to do any of that. This is, this is ridiculous. I don't like any of it. R. Kelly. You know, this is this is sad and unfortunate. We've had we've seen too many men get charged with these various bogus charges. We've seen too many women be able to lie on men. We've seen we've seen too many holes in their stories and people say we must believe women. All I say is this. I said it before, I'll say it again. You know, in the 1940s there was a young man, his name was Emmett Till. He was accused of whistling at a white woman, which today would probably be considered rape given how you all are overreacting to everything. That's probably rape, like, like mouth rape, word rape. And so since he did that, he was uh, you know, a white woman, went and accused him of sexual assault, and then some white man drug him through the streets, and they killed this young 14-year-old boy, and they got off, and they got off, they got off of this. So by all you all's definition, by the way you all are acting today, by you all rushing to judgment on things that you know nothing about, Emma Till deserves to be dead. So, let's not forget, let's not forget, something that I don't want you people to forget. Just remember, when Lady Gaga came out, she was all for the gays, right? She was, she was pro-gay, she was all our gays. 
gay this, gay that. I'm gay, you gay, we gay. Thank you to my fans, to Ray K, the director, Lorian Gibson, uh, to Troy Carter, the whole house, Matt Williams for the clothes, to God and the gays. She gay, he gay. V gay, A gay. Everybody was gay. Right? She was all with it. Then, she was all of a sudden, she was dating men. She came out, she was looking very tranny esque, very uh, transsexual esque. Then, after that, she looks like a woman now. Now, not saying that Lady Gaga can't do that. Everybody can transition their career how they need to. I'm down with it. I understand. But she lied to you people. She did do it. She told you all that she was with this. Now she's with that. Which one is it? So you don't think that Lady Gaga would do whatever she needs to do to save her career? You don't think that Lady Gaga would go out and say this about R. Kelly and say things about how, well, I, I don't, I'm, I'm ashamed of this. I want to distance myself from this. You don't think that she would do that, seeing as how R. Kelly's career has looked like it's, it's about to go on a bad decline. You don't, you don't think that she would do that? You think that she would be integritous and she would stand with her, with this artist that she sought out to do a song with? This song of this nature, because, you know, wait a minute, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me tell you what she actually said about the song. Because it's best to, to, to read the words of Lady Gaga as she, as she expressed her thoughts about the song. It was a song that she created because she wanted to, to show how she had evolved as an artist. It was, it, as, as, as it states, as it states, she came to an article discussing her weight and she was angered with the news. She decided that it was through her music that she would, that she could take a stance against the shallow journalism. That's part of the reason why the video has R. Kelly as a doctor and she's sitting on the table. After the release of her first single, Applause, the singer was also determined to create something different and unfamiliar from her past hit singles and do what you want stem from these thoughts. Gaga told MTV, I had been living in Chicago and spending a lot of time there, and, and that is where R. Kelly hails from. I was working on Art Pop and wrote Do What You Want on tour. It was about my obsession with the way people view me. So she wrote it. So, she wrote it. R. Kelly's a pet. She wrote it. I have always been an R. Kelly fan. I guess not anymore, right? And actually, it is like an epic pastime in the house of Gaga, her little crew that we just get fucked up and play R. Kelly. This is a real R&B, and I have to call the king of R&B, and I need his blessing. It was mutual love. I guess it wasn't. I guess it was not mutual love. I guess Lady Gaga was under some duress from her sexual assault, and so she reached out to R. Kelly because he's a sexual assaulter, and she felt like she would find comfort in becoming a different person in the arms of R. Kelly, a sexual assaulter. I'm confused, as most of you probably are too. So either way, people who say that it's in his music, oh, it's all in his music, you can hear it in his songs, he says it all the time. Okay, well, I hope you show that same equity when you listen to 50 Cent. And he talks about smoking weed, and he clearly doesn't. Lips are pink as shit. I hope you sell that same equity when you listen to Future. Future tells you how he sip lean or do coke or whatever. And then he has told you in interviews that he doesn't do the shit. I hope you show that same equity to Teddy Pendergrass when you hear Love TKO. And you know that that man died in the wheelchair because he had got into a car accident because he was messing around with a tranny. So you know that all those so, so all those songs are for trannies, right? They're all for transsexuals. So I, I hope that you all show that same equity to all of these artists when you hear their music. Rappers, they're all drug dealers. They all are selling drugs to the black community. French Montana is a is a is a Moroccan rapper. He's an Arab! And he's selling drugs to the black community. He's a racist. Look at this. Yeah, you are listening to Brandon Radio.